around in this matchup. Looking at the series layout here, Wes, we have Strongholds on Live Fire for Game 1. Game 2, Slayer, Aquarius, then Bazaar captures the flag. And if we get there, Oddball Streets and Slayer recharge. Wes, what do you think about the series layout? Yeah, I think I only looked at the first three game modes and maps <laughs> because from what we saw from the boys yesterday, they're going to have to be a completely different team here today if they want to go up against the two-time world champs. we got Sentinels versus the boys. It's going to be Live Fire Strongholds, Game 1. You have that sniper rifle as that power weapon on the map. I want to see Formal pick that thing up. We know what he can do with the hopping on board with him to get things started. Put down shots on a couple players, pushing that brick B strongholds um, are already capturing that A when the boys capturing C. So first B control actually goes to the boys as they get some points on the board to get things started. Yeah, not just a point yet. They were contested strongholds, oh. but they are jumping into A right now. Formal did get taken down from some heavy pressure all across the map. The heat wave actually goes in the boys' favor as well. So Snakebite going to be trying to push B here. Does get taken down with the trade, but numbers advantages for Sentinels for the first time. We'll see if they're able to get some points. On board with Snipe Ball from the boys. Nice kill, controlling B and A early. You're going to see these teams trying to focus on that B stronghold point. It is that make or break stronghold as the opposite sides of the map. You have A and C, obviously. B will be that main point of focus for both of these teams. Still no points on the board yet for Sentinels as we're hopping on board here with Lethal. Frosty at a 5-0 start. If we can hop over to his screen, I believe he had the Snipe. Might not have much ammo left, but he does have this camo to play around as well. Very good positioning from here. I love... Frosty when he has the snipe. I mean, everybody loves Frosty when the, when he has the snipe because it usually means something good is about to happen. Yeah, already six kills on the board as Frosty putting that sniper to use. We know what this man can do. Nice melee there on that player rushing bottom. He'll make that a double kill for Frosty. Looking for the triple. Will not find it, but already, look at that. Eight kills on the board for Frosty, but none on the board yet for Lethal. Two away from a killing frenzy here, Frosty. Doing it all with every weapon up close and personal with a couple of melees so far, too. I actually love the fact that he slowed it down right now. He's not going to try and pressure C unless one of his teammates finds an opening. They do have a member down right now, but Sinos has these players trap back tower and a great use of the drop wall, repositions, and a nice shot with the snipe from Frosty there to help his team get C. It's so frosty, putting on a show in this first winner's bracket matchup of the weekend. That triple cap is so deadly. And finally, the boys able to weather the storm a little bit, capture C, and now converging on that B stronghold point. Yeah, unfortunately, no killing frenzy for Frosty, but the control still in Sentinels' favors for now. The boys actually able to get B throughout the chaos. And if they can defend C here, this is a great opportunity, but Camouflage gets out of their hands. It's in snake fights. And with the Mangler, he makes slight work of that player bottom middle. Snakebite does trade with that camo and heat wave, so that will be down. Frosty has a mangler, nice headshot there, taking down that member at B stronghold point. Trying to capture it solo. Frosty doing it all here. Already 10 kills on the board for it. So Frosty, this man is on fire. Still no kills for Lethal, though. We pointed that out twice now. I know it's early, and Sentinels with over a 100 point lead probably doesn't care if, if Lethal gets a kill or not this game. They're doing everything right so far throughout this game. I want to see the boys do a better job of controlling some of the power weapons because right now Frosty has his second snipe of the game. Nice repulsor there, Frosty timing that sniper spawn. Already having a good start with this weapon. I want to see him put it to use. Let's see some double kills, Let's see some triple kills out of Frosty. We know he has what it takes. It's going to be a highlight reel if he continues to pick up snipe for free in this match. The boys need to do a better job of getting camo because Frosty, when he gets the opportunity to get the power-ups, the power weapons, he goes off a great shutdown from Morga right there with the Mangler. And unfortunately, it's only traded out for the boys. Wes, I wanted to ask you, what do you think Formal brings to the Sentinels roster? I think Formal brings a little bit of aggressiveness, right? A roll to one of your most passive players as far as Halo players are concerned, especially at the top. But what Formal does is he adds a little bit more pressure onto some of these teams. It could bode well for Sentinels throughout this weekend if they can find a good play style to play around Formal, as well as the communication factor that, in all honesty, Faisal, I mean, Formal has the best communication in Halo right now. I'll say it hands down. I've watched his stream multiple times since he's made the switch, and I'm just always impressed with how clear and concise those comms are. I'd love to be able to go into a Sentinels listening. 
Animal with that camouflage, putting shots down on A. They have no idea where he is. Finally starts taking some damage. Looking at that kill feed, Sentinels is wiping the floor right now as far as slays go. 12 for Frosty. Snakebite already 11 on the board. Nice little acceleration of kills out of him as uh, we saw earlier. Lethal as well now on the board with four kills. Nice shot by Snipe Paul there to stay alive. No shield, lands a body shot. Unfortunately, can't find the double. Plays need to be made from the boys, and unfortunately, with not much time remaining in this game, we're going to go into an Astro Listen in as this game wraps up for Sentinels. Yeah, hard death, yeah, they're gonna get out, guys. They're gonna get out. Hudson, Hudson, The definition of professional comms out of Sentinels there. These guys have such a good communication. Time and time again, obviously, world champions here. Sentinels know exactly what it takes when it comes to communication in-game. You have to be clear and concise and confident with your teammates as there you have it. Game number one going to Sentinels. What a story would it be, Wes? Coming at an open bracket if these guys can go all the way, and we know they have what it takes. What a story it would be, but would any of us actually really be shocked by any means? I mean, what business as we are looking here at game number two. Sentinels versus the boys. The boys really gonna need to come out, control this power up, control the abilities on the map, and try to get to control early to try to get this win against Sentinels in game two. Yeah, I wanna see the boys do a much better job of acquiring some of this sandbox early on. We're talking thrust, we're talking heat waves. Get these situational advantages to where you have a better opportunity when you're going, to get, uh, when you're going up against some of the best players in the world, because you're gonna need every advantage you can get. Starting off things with formal, dropping front of the base, trying to put down some fire across the map here as he pushes all the way through uncontested bottom middle. Nice kill by formal, looking for the double kill. Does get it, three members fall, one of them being Frosty. So a good two to one start for Sentinels and control a little bit in their favor as formal already three kills on the board. Already three kills and he's got both thrusts for the game in his back pocket right now. The heat wave is as well. And right now formal is the most powerful Spartan on the map. He's got three kills to his name. Let's see what he can do. Notice about that heat wave that, you know, it has two ways to fire the weapon. You have the horizontal cursor and the vertical cursor. You see players always opt to choose the vertical as you can do more damage. It does take more precision, but it does do a lot more damage now hopping on board with Snipe Hall. It's always interesting to see which players prefer the, the different horizontal, vertical, reticles in which situations. We were watching Trippy earlier today, and he was using that vertical situation a lot more than the horizontal. So very interested to see how players determine which situations they want to favor the which reticle in. Right now we are looking at a six to six game right now. I believe it is tied for these boys. And that means a good, that bodes well for the boys, right? They've started off being able to weather the storm of formal starting off three and zero, getting all that power. They've taken him down. And since then, they've got a little bit of momentum. Frosty running into three opponents on this car set and somehow managing to stay alive and not only stay alive, but bait the players into a formal back smack. And once again, Frosty on your screen, double kill for him, looking for the triple, but good shots and wisely chooses to back off in that fight and controlling the map instead. Yeah, just like that, it's 11 to seven. So Sentinels now up five kills after that heat wave from Lethal. And Lethal, one of these players that, I mean, he's the second greatest player of all time in the top 25 list. You want to talk about his accolades, but right now you want to talk about what he brings to the Sentinels roster, especially when they throw someone new. We thought that calm voice in everybody's ear, I feel like, that makes everything feel okay. Yeah, he, nothing ever faces Lethal. He's always so level-headed. So, uh, you know, always very calm, cool, and collected as Lethal. And similarly to everyone on this roster, you know, Formal with the addition of him, like you said earlier, that was a bold statement, but I tend to agree with it, that Formal actually may have the best comms in the entire game. Every time I watch his stream, whenever they're streaming Formal, always a good leader, always has good communication, and that helps so much at the top level. I mean, great grenades, great shot, great communication. Formal doing it all so far here in our winner's bracket round one. Sentinels with an early lead here in game two as well, 20 to eight. Yeah, this one is starting to get away from the boys really quick. Already a 12 kill lead and Formal has all the confidence in the world move freely, uh, moving freely around the map, finding a couple players here in the utility room. Nice shots out of Formal for the killing spree. Beautiful shots out of Formal. You're starting to see him really heat up. 11 and 3, so 
obviously feeling very comfortable with his home on Sentinels. Couldn't have asked for a better team to come into this open kickoff tournament formal on a, a, dyn a dynasty roster here with Sentinels. St manages to stay alive with that thruster. It is such a useful ability to have in your back pocket, whether it's in a BR fight, whether you're trying to get out of harm's way, that thrust can come in handy so often. It's like he's had it all game almost, right? Every time we've been on formal Ooh. screen, a rare miss shot from Formal. Great shots by Sandell there. And they're going to need that to happen several more times for this game to get any closer because right now Sentinel's still in complete control of the map. You've seen Robson try and compete for these Dynamo grenades, but unfortunately, he's taken down. Damage is done, but no one there from the boys to trade out any of that damage. Yeah, now Sandell once again trying to get these cleanup kills on the car side, but. Once again, Sentinel just does such a good job. It's almost like they're more dangerous when they're one shot because you get tempted to go chase that kill and they're always going to play it perfectly. They're going to bait and switch. So whenever you see a Sentinel's player one shot, don't think it's going to be a free kill because it's probably a trap. We feel playing so well around those dynamo grenades right there. Absolutely incredible movement, the jump at the end forcing that player for the boys to miss shots. And because of it, Lethal is able to pick up another one and no. extend Sentinel's lead now 35 to 15. Yeah, this one is looking like a bloodbath. 35 to 15, 20 kill lead for Sentinel's using that sidekick snakebite, showing us the professionalism, showing us the consistency. Once again, putting that sidekick to use and taking down Sandell, who had that BR in that close range battle. You are going to want to use that sidekick if you got your hands on it. The time to kill it really quick with that thing. Frosty with another power up in the series with Camo, finds himself a double. 39-17 now, and you just see how aggressive Sinless is playing right now, Faisal. It's like they have no care in the world. If they find you, if they spot you, they're going to push you. Yeah, and once the score starts looking like this, West 41 to 17, you just you just start playing risky, right? You, you, you go for the flashy plays, and players like Frosty love to go for the flashy plays, and unlike some of us, uh, you can actually pull them off. Yeah, <laughs> another killing spree for another Sentinels member. It feels like we're becoming a broken record here in this game two. Aquarius Slayer it is not going to be a close one. It is 44 to 17, six kills remaining for Sentinels to close this one out and take themselves to a game three, leading the series two to zero. Coming all the way from the open bracket, they were actually like the ninth seed in the open bracket. So fighting their way through that gauntlet and now having such a dominating start in the pro bracket. Up 47 to 17. Geez, make that 48 as Snakebite picks up the thruster. Only a couple more kills to go and we'll be hopping into game three. That heat wave, a couple missed shots, but does get the trade. And there you see the spectacular medal as Sentinels goes up two to zero against the boys. You gotta love just the the silent fist bumps, right? Good job, everybody. All business. Business as usual for the boys in red. We have the dynamo grenades. We have the grapple, right? We have the power up. So a lot to consider when you're trying to win a game on Bizarre, capture the flag. Let's see if the boys can come out strong. You want to see them get off to a hot start. You want to see them grab those rockets, those over shields to start off the game, give themselves those advantages to be able to push into Sentinels' base. Let's see if they're capable of doing so. Here we go. We're hopping on board with Snake Bite to start this one off. I was interested to see if anyone was going to try to do that strat where you run for the grapple and, and grapple the overshield of yourself or grapple the rockets, but not this game as we're on board with Morga. Spots a player in the opponent's closet. Marks him. I love that about Halo Infinite. It allows you the option to ping or mark on the map, and we've seen players use that ability time and time again as Frosty gets the better of that engagement against Sandel. So the good news for the boys is they were able to get overshield. The bad news is that overshield just got deleted and you only got an assist out of it. Rockets are still up, though, and it does look like the battle for mid-map is still going down. It's up to the boys to try and compete, but it does look like Sentinels once again with Rockets in hand. You see Lethal picks up that first kill. Yeah, Formal already made his way all the way to the boys' base, and he's got Lethal right behind him with those Rockets. Let's see if he picks up that thrust. Chooses, shoots a bit of a pucket rocket, you know, as they say, but now all the way into the base of the boys, and the flag run is already started as Lethal is running this towards that bar area. He does have good control from his teammates, and so far hasn't even been touched. There are members from the boys that have been able to push out of their base. Let's pay attention to the kill feed here. Formal and Lethal both show up with kills. That's three dead now for the boys, and this flag with it already being across halfway, it's up to Robson by himself to stop it. Yeah, tall order for Robson as grenades are flying at him. He chooses to wisely back up because there wasn't much hope to stop that flag as so many teammates from Sentinels were there protecting Lethal as he does cap that flag. Now heading here towards that BR side. A great job by Sentinels to get those rockets, get 
Get an opportunity with a few kills in a row to get into the base. Lethal gets a quick flag grab. They only have to slay one more time, and they get that flag punched in. An early flag cap for Sentinels show you exactly that when you give map control to Sentinels early, they're going to cap flags. Snake bite in no man's land right there, grappling right into a couple opponents as he falls now on board with the Robs and trying to get some grenades into this top rockets, um, but not able to do much damage there. Formal, once again, that's back to back overshields. Actually, excuse me, the boys did get that first overshield, but were melted. So, first overshield we're seeing in play in this game as Formal, once again, keeping the pressure on the boys. This player does stay alive for a little bit, so Formal having to do a little bit more to take him down. Gives up his positioning as well, so now the boys could take advantage of this. Unfortunately, uh -oh. it does look like Formal runs out of ammo in the BR, and that's a great kill by the boys right there. I love how they were just able to clear out their base, all because that one player stays alive, Faisal. Yeah, kind of a mishap there from Formal, missing his shots with the BR, also missing him with that commando, so not going to see that too often out of Formal. Snakebite gets some nice shots there, bottom Bulldog, and I believe he sprinted over and grabbed that really quick fire rate Bulldog. You cannot afford to miss shots in battles and one-on-one -on -one battles against Sentinels. And right there, we saw the boys just not shooting quite well enough to take down Snakebite. Now Sentinels look like they have map control for a little bit. With rockets coming up, this could be really bad for the boys. Frosty able to grab those rockets and see if he can retreat. He's not able to and goes down. Morga takes him out. And Rocket's actually in the hands of Snakebite. So good uh, awareness there to quickly pick up those Rockets. No, honestly, a great few kills from the boys. And an even better job of making sure Snakebite oh. wastes these Rockets without the opportunity to push into the base. He has to use both Rockets just to get a kill. It's immediately traded out. And so the boys eliminate Sentinel's opportunity with power weapons. That's the first time this series we've really seen that. Yeah, good shots there out of Frosty now, getting some assists as well. And you'll see uh, these top teams always try to control. It's so powerful to control that front, front side of the opponent's base and near the pillars, near that jump up area. It's just such a hard kill to get if you're the other team. And players like Frosty are notorious for milking their life and staying alive, right? So Frosty playing a little bit aggressive there in the opponent's treehouse and does get taken out. But that front base is so crucial to control. That was a big one-on-one -on -one win from Morgan right there on the Frosty. If he doesn't win that, you're looking at Sentinels having control of the base, potentially running a flag. Unfortunately, Morgan trying to push out by himself here, forced to back down those shield. And now the boys are going to be in a very difficult situation. They know Sentinels is coming. They know all of Sentinels is coming, and they have to figure out a way to get some kills. Not able to connect with that green gun, but does take off the overshield from Lethal. So once again, Sentinels pushing heavily into the boys' base. Lethal here gets spots a couple players, gets some good info for his team, and unfortunately gets taken down from the player. Their utility, and now Formal is right there to clean up the kills. Yeah. Two members for Sentinels do go down, so Formal has a lot of work to do if they still want to try and keep this flag alive. Unfortunately, I think he's going to back up, and that's actually the right play. The boys able to push out their base a little bit, but Formal's going to stop them from pushing, and now with a little bit of help Ooh. from his friends, they look to push again. Mangler in his back pocket, BR out and about. Formal already in the boys' base, getting the second flag run started for the Sentinel squad. And what awareness by Formal there. When he loses two teammates, he falls back, he gets his shield, he turns it into two kills, and that creates another opening that Sentinels now has to get a second flag on the go. First opportunity Ooh. gets squandered there a little bit by the boys, but I'm happy that they're actually able to get into the Sentinel's base, right? That's what you're going to need to do. You're going to need to get into their base and at least give yourself a chance by getting those flags out of the base, throw it out front. But as I say, that formal already running this second flag all the way back to his base. And we think of formal as that main slayer. Actually, you know, all these players can be considered main slayers on the Sentinel's roster. But the thing is, what makes them so great is they can do it all, right? They have the awareness. They have the map situations all figured out and they know when to do the objective and when to slay. I mean, that's one of the best things about the Sentinels roster is yes, they all get killed. So yes, they all look like main slayers, but they all play efficient Halo. They all play good Halo, right? If they're in a position to do the objective, they're going to do the objective. So just because you're labeled as a main slayer, just because you get a lot of kills, doesn't mean it's not your responsibility to be in position oh. to pull the flag. Overshield does get taken down there, and this could be the opening the boys need to get some control. They get Overshield in their hands, and now here we go. Yeah, and for the first time in the Halo franchise, the power-ups are actually need to be activated when you pick them up as we're on board. Morga has that overshield. The flag is running through Rockets, West. Somehow the flag gets pulled through Rockets. Sentinels overextended, got into the base. They didn't fight for overshield well enough. 
Rockets and Overshield are used to get the return. Now we'll see what the boys can do with this map control. Unfortunately, one player alive. He's bottom shotty, and he gets a double. That's going to be Frosty picking up a double, keeping that flag alive. And now Sentinels all of a sudden could potentially get a third flag. We got Robson down there. Good kill, big kill out of Robson, taking down Snakebite and getting that flag return. You got the return, yes, but you had map control for what it felt like. If Frosty wasn't a nuisance and gets a double bottom shotgun, it really felt like the boys was going to have the first opportunity to control the inside of the map and maybe dictate, dictate some of the pace in this game. Unfortunately, when you're going up against Frosty, even if he's the last guy alive, he's a problem. He is a problem indeed, as we see four perfect shots out of It's So Frosty. I love seeing that medal. Very few things are as satisfying as getting that perfect medal in this game. You got Jeff Steitzer in your ear telling you perfect. You know you did something well. And Frosty, it looks it. Him and Jeff, they have a great relationship together. <laughs> it seems like every single time we see one, we see the other. That third flag being run by Snakebite through the treehouse down near those dynamo grenades. Chooses to just throw it out for his team and stays in his position. That's what I love about the Sentinels roster too, is they just have such awareness about what what positions on the map are important to control, and not just are important to control, but when they're important to control, right? You see Snakebite there throwing the flag out and choosing to stay alive and slay for his team, and because of that, the flag is still active and Formal able to move up and get a touch. Yeah, Formal does get that touch. A kill does come in for Snakebite, and now it's Snakebite's job to get a kill. He actually finds two with Overshield coming up. This is a massive play from Snakebite to oh keep boy. this flag alive. He's going to be able to run this thing as well. Players are coming off the spawns for the boys, but they're no position to stop this one from going in. Overshield in hand, flag being juggled as there you have it. The third flag cap does go in for Sentinels. Keep in mind, they're up 2-0 in this series. Coming out of the open bracket, Gauntlet now looking to sweep their first pro bracket series. The boys still Perfect. continuing to try and fight for space on the map. Pressured off spawn Frosty and the boys pushing in to the boys flag right now. Running it once again over the balcony. We've seen this route multiple times from Sentinels. Slaves do need to come through and three go down for the boys. And unfortunately, this is going to be the fourth flag. Yeah, I want to take a moment to talk about this kill feed, West. Look at that. 19, 17, 13, 17, all double digits for Sentinels. On the other side, you see uh, the boys, only one member, that's Morga in double digits. And very rarely do you see the team that's getting outslayed win the objectives. Now, I'm not going to say it never happens because we've both been on both sides, you know, where you can win an objective game. But you really got to get slays on the board. You got to get kills to, get, to open up the map for you and your teammates. And so far, the boys haven't been able to do that. Yeah, a lot of the times you'll hear us say stats don't always tell the real story the game well there's sometimes stats tell the entire story of the game and if you're looking at the scoreboard right now when players have 20 and 19 and then players on the other side have five you can pretty much guess that it was a very lopsided affair in the ctf scoreline four to zero here sentinels absolutely dominating so far in this series and the aggression stays on for frosty and the boys is not able to clean up that kill um runs towards the double doors but there you have snake by just sliding off that ramp into the opponent's face and get some damage from his own teammate there you see that blue marker um, but finally does go down slays do come through for the boys they did have three down for just a moment but the last player alive that was sandel he was able to get that kill on a snake fight able to get all of sentinels out of his face for what might feel like the first time in this game they get an overshield Ooh. now with just a minute and 50 seconds left on the clock Faisal, you're not looking to probably come back in this game because that would be almost an impossible task but getting some momentum going into the elimination bracket is important mm -hmm. maybe they can get something going win a few fights get a flag on the board and figure out how they want to play this map going forward in this tournament yeah, don't get it twisted, everyone watching. The boys are definitely one of the top teams in Halo. It's just that they're going against one of the best historic teams in Halo. So they're going to have a long run ahead of them in this tournament, and it's no nothing to be sad about to lose against the Sentinels roster. Like Meek Mill said, there's levels to this stuff. To the stuff. There is levels to this stuff as formal in the boys' base once again doing the objective, showing us that he can do it all as this final flag cap is being run through the boys' treehouse. Yeah, we see Formal just once again running it through tree. Sentinels really finding a, a fond uh, flag route here through that tree, right? You see some teams running through double door. You see some teams bring it into the bar. Sentinels every single time feels like they've run it that same way. That stop does come in, though. You're seeing a play being made by the boys now. Morga getting a flag run of his own. And this is what I was talking about, Faisal. Uh, finally, we see some life out of the boys. It might be too little too late, but this is great for any opportunity they may have later on in the tournament.
could not agree more. Finish the series on a good note. Sandel would want a big battle at Optics top base to allow Morga to run this flag and put one on the board for the boys. So good flag cap out of the boys. Absolutely. You love to see the life out of the boys. Their tournament will not be over after this game. 18 seconds remain. They are going to have constant pressure from Sentinels in their base. Sentinels do look like they want to put a fifth one of their own in. Uh-oh. Sentinels. Wants to put the nail in the coffin as you see Snake by running that flag out of double doors. The snipe ball is here to say, no sir, not today. Takes him down. That flag has dropped bottom middle. And if I'm uh, the boys, I just don't want them to cap that fifth flag and they don't. But Sentinels does win the series 3-0 sweep. What a way to start their pro bracket run. Yeah, absolutely. A 3-0 in very dominant fashions. Games one, two, and three. That's the Sentinels these fans know and love.